Rock of Ages. Now, if you saw my Monday show, you know that this is probably my most anticipated film of the summer. I don't know why it's my most anticipated film of the summer, but it looked fine, and so I was really excited to see it. So the main plot behind Rock of Ages is kind of hard to talk about because there's so many smaller subplots within it, but for starters, you have the main love story between Julianne Hough, his character, and Diego Bonet. That's character. I think that's how you pronounce his name. <laughs> they both have great talented singing voice. They they work at this bar called the Bourbon, and eventually they want to become famous. You know, be the next big rock stars. And then you have the biggest rock star, Stacy Jacks, played by Tom Cruise, that is hard to work with. That's unreliable. That wants to leave his band and become a solo act, which you know most rock singers want to do eventually. And a reporter. The worst of Rolling Stones, who was played by Malin Anchorman. That was totally a subtle little look at my paper. <laughs> it kind of points out that, you know, he's hard to work with, that everybody hates him, and then eventually, because of that, they start to fall in love. I know, strange idea, but it works. Then you also have Kathy Zeta Jones' character, who's the wife of the mayor, that hates rock music, you know, it's the devil's music. They get together with a church group and goes and protests the bourbon, which is the bar that plays all this rock music where Stacey Jacks became famous, and so on, and they want to shut it down. And on the flip side of that, you have Alec Baldwin's character and Russell Brand, who work at the bourbon, Alec Baldwin owns it, that say, you know, rock is great, we need to keep it alive, and they're the opposite of that. Wow, that was actually really long, hard to talk about for some odd reason. Moving on. So I mentioned there's a lot of different love stories in there, but that's not the main reason you go to see it. I mean, nobody is going to stand there and look at the poster, look at the advertisements and go, Oh, Rock of Ages, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's going to be the next notebook right there. That's, that's going to be the next greatest love story. Yeah, uh-huh. No, nobody is going to say that when looking at the advertisements and the posters and all that. It's not going to happen. The reason you want to go see Rock of Ages is because of the musical, because of the music that's played in it. And because of that, the love story is not original. It's a love story that we've seen many times. There's a lot of the cliches in there that we've seen. There's the middle portion of the movie that easily could be taken out that it just drags on the film. The music that they play in there kind of tells the story better than the actual dialogue does. So it would have been better in my opinion. I mean, obviously this wouldn't happen because a lot of people would hate it. But if it just went from song to song to song to song, kind of like a concert that tells a story, because it would have been much better if it just did that. The last problem I really have with this film is that the story arc between the church group and the rock and rollers didn't have a really strong, solid ending. It felt really overlooked and anticlimactic. It just it didn't feel like it had a second thought going into it. It was just a really terrible ending for that story arc. The main reason you want to see this film, other than of course the singing and that if you're a fan of 80s music, is Tom Cruise. This guy just owns his role. He commits to every role he is in, and the way he acts like it is... He is perfect for this role, all his little movements and the way he acts, and his comedic timing is fantastic. He just owns his movie, it's definitely worth the ticket price just to see him and have classic 80s music blaring in your ear at the same time. <laughs> now this movie, for some reason, I really enjoyed it like I thought I would, and it pulled me in. I was really invested in these characters, regardless of how I felt about the main idea and the plots and the genericness of it. I was really truly invested in these characters. There's even a moment when Julianne Huff's character has to go through, you know, she's at the lowest low and she has, you know, to make decisions. And if you've seen the movie, it's during the shoot what song is it? Any way you want it, any way you want it, and that's the way it needs it, whatever the song's title is. There's that at that moment where she has to make this decision, I was actually sitting there thinking, no, no, do you're not gonna do that. No, you, you do not need to do that, you're better than that, no. And if a movie can pull me in to invest in the character that much, then it did a fantastic job of being able to pull the entire audience. Because I can't imagine that I was the only one sitting there in my theater and all the theaters across the globe that, are, that can see this, I guess, not across the globe. But anyways, the people that can see it that thought that way, I'm sure I'm not the only one that did. Let me know in the comments if you thought the same thinking process that I did, I guess. I'm just rambling now. Now I gotta say to go along with the whole invested in the characters thing, because I was invested in the characters so much and I kinda started to fall for the story a little bit, just a little bit. When they started seeing a journey, you know, just a small town girl. I am not gonna sing because that'd be awful. 
But anyways, when they started singing that, I got goosebumps. I was so pulled into it and into the music that I wanted to stand up in the theater and just start doing that because it felt like a real concert the way that it was filmed and how great they were. I was truly invested in the music, in the characters, and I wish the story would have been a little bit more appealing. Now there is something that just bugged me when I was sitting in the theater and I don't want to just mention it. I want to dedicate an entire new segment to it. So in order to start and give my opinions on it, it's not about the movie, it's about stupid people in the theater. I'm going to open a new segment called Mikey's Rant Corner. So if you'd please join me in the corner. That did not sound right. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to my corner, and welcome to the first episode of Mikey's Rants Corner. Now this episode is dedicated to all of you 13 to 14 year old prepubescent pre-teened punks that were in my theater, and probably in other ones. Now, if you look at the poster for Rock of Ages, at the very bottom it says featuring music from Poison, Ario Speedwagon, Death Leopard, Twisted Sister, and Journey, and Foreigner. Now, obviously, if you don't know who those are, you can go home and Google them and you can find out that these bands aren't new. That they are frequently actually old. Frequently actually old. They are actually old. And so for you punks that were in my theater, that every 10 to 15 minutes, whenever they would start singing songs from these artists, would get up, walk out of the theater, and through the exit door, and shine a big huge light from the lobby on the other side of the wall, pulling all of the audience away from the music and out of the movie, you guys are assholes. You do not go to a movie for every 10 to 15 minutes to step out of it because you don't like the songs. Obviously these songs are from the 80s, and because you are not from the 80s, you might not like it. You won't ruin the experience for all the other people in the theater that do like this movie. So next time you go to a movie and it's a musical that features songs, look at the songs. That way you don't waste your time, waste our time having to watch you and be pulled out of a movie. Thank you. This has been my corner. I will see you guys next time. So overall, the only problems I had with it was the middle section could have easily been taken out a little bit. The church group story didn't have a real solid ending, and the love story was just real generic, something that we've seen before. So for each of those, I'm going to take away a .5 for this rating to give it a total of 8.5 out of 10. The film was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I even went home and bought the soundtrack on my iTunes account of all the songs. It's a great time. Definitely worth checking out. So let me know in the comment section, what is your favorite musical movie? Yeah, that works. Musical movie. Movie. Musical movie. I'm probably going to need a lot of slack for this because I found out recently that not a lot of people like it. But my, my favorite is actually Grease. When I was a kid, I watched it a lot. I had a lot of fun with it. So even now, as I'm older, I can understand why people have problems with it. But it still reminds me of a time when I was younger. And it was, it's really fun for me to watch. Also, if you enjoyed this review, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it, as well as leaving me a like. I also really appreciate that. My name is Mikey, and this has been another episode of Colossal Analysis, and I will see you guys next time.